Well, we're on the last lap now of these online services um, and we've got a fantastic final journey to go on over the next few weeks before we all start to, to meet again. And we um, met Matteo and Sinan the other week uh, near the park and Sinan was talking to me about what it's going to be like when we all finally get together again. It was fantastic to think that it's not going to be too long. So this final journey, um, this story starts with a group of slaves. Now, these slaves were descendants of Joseph. Do you remember Joseph had uh, been there as the governor under Pharaoh uh, in Egypt and Pharaoh had invited all his family, all Joseph's family to come and they had lived in Egypt for hundreds of years um, and Joseph had died and that Pharaoh had died and the Egyptians had begun to feel threatened by them because there were hundreds of thousands now of Israelites in Egypt and so they made them slaves and they oppressed the Israelites and they even killed some of their children and the babies um, and they treated them cruelly um, and those Israeli slaves began to cry out to God to find them a saviour, a rescuer. And the man God chose was an 80-year-old man called Moses who was living at the back of the desert many, many miles from Egypt. Um, and there God spoke to this man who you wouldn't think was a very likely rescuer, but from this burning fiery bush one day God spoke to Moses in the wilderness. And Moses hid his face and he was terrified because he realized he was speaking with the living God. But God said some wonderful things to him. He said this, he said, I know the people's sufferings. I know their sorrows. I know their sadness. I know their difficulties. I know their pain. The amazing thing is that God today still knows these things. He knows our sufferings, our sorrows, our sadness, our difficulties and our pain. And then God said to Moses, I've heard their cry. So often we can go through things and God doesn't hear our cry because we're not calling out to him to bring the answers to us. And then God said to Moses this amazing thing. He said, I have come down. God himself was coming down upon the earth to help them. And then you probably know the story how God sent disease and plagues and disaster after disaster to Egypt and how God spoke to Pharaoh through Moses and said, let my people go. And do you remember that Moses, uh, that Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go? Um, he, he was stubborn in his heart. And then finally there comes a night where Moses says to the people, get ready, because tonight's going to be our last night in Egypt. Pharaoh will never see my face again. Tomorrow we'll no longer be slaves. We're going to leave Egypt. And as they're getting ready, something really wonderful and extraordinary begins to happen. And God had told Moses this would happen. The God gives the, the Israelites favor with the Egyptians. And the Egyptian people begin to give them gold. And they begin to give them silver and other treasures and precious stones. And they give them wonderful clothes and beautiful silk and other material. And they just give and give their treasures to the Israelites before they leave Egypt. And then that night at twilight, they sacrificed, didn't they, those Passover lambs. First time this had ever been done. And then the fathers of the households went and painted above the doors the, this blood from the lamb. And then the families gathered together and they ate that Passover meal together. But in Egypt, the next morning, a great cry rose up, didn't it? Because death had visited Egypt and God had punished them. And there were many dead, these firstborn sons. And Pharaoh calls to, to, to Moses and sends a message and says, go, get out, take all the people, take all their animals, get out. And then the Egyptians themselves, they begin to say to the Israelites, hurry up and go, because if you stay here any longer, God might kill us all. And so the people gathered together. Now, this wasn't some small tribal gathering. This was hundreds of thousands of people. It was a huge movement of people. And at the front of those people leading them was Moses. And in front of Moses was God himself. Because God came among them like he said he would. And during the day as they traveled out from Egypt, he was a cloud above them. He was protecting them from the sunlight. But at night when it became cold, he became this fiery pillar. Got a wonderful picture of the people moving towards the fiery pillar following that fiery pillar and they traveled for two whole weeks and then they reached this place the Red Sea they reached the shores of the Red Sea and they looked out across it to the other side they knew they'd got to get across but there was no way across 
What were they going to do? They became angry with Moses and turned on him. They said, this is your fault. But what they didn't know at that point was that their situation was about to get a whole lot worse. Because back in Egypt, Pharaoh's suddenly thinking, what have we done? We've let all our slaves escape. We've let them go free. And we've not only that, we've given them all our treasures. And he ordered the great armies of Egypt, 600 amazing chariots, to go after the people, to chase across the desert area around Egypt and to go after them and to find them. And then the people realized, the Israelites realized they could hear this rumbling sound in the far distance and they knew, they knew this was Pharaoh coming after them and they became even more angry with Moses. They said, we're going to die out here in the desert. Weren't there graves in Egypt that we could have been buried there? Why did you bring us out? They knew they were trapped now between Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea. And Moses boldly stands up and says, don't be afraid. The Lord will fight for you. And that evening as the Egyptians Egyptian army approached, two extraordinary things happened. The first was that that pillar of cloud and of fire, God moved that pillar behind the Israelites. He'd been in front of them. He now moved behind them. And then he did an amazing thing. He caused there to be darkness all around Pharaoh's army. They couldn't see where they were going. They couldn't see where the Israelites were. But this fiery cloud was was a light on the Israelite side. It was an extraordinary thing. God separated the Egyptians from the Israelites. And then the second amazing thing happened. Moses lifts up that night his rod, this staff that God had given him, this stick. He lifts it up. We've got an amazing picture of this over the Red Sea. And then even more amazing, God begins to move on the waters. Remember what God had said to Moses, I will come down. God came down that night upon the Red Sea and an east wind came. And the Bible teaches us that the Red Sea fled from the presence of the God of Jacob because God had came down. Those, those waters parted because God came down. It was an extraordinary night. How amazing it would have been if you'd stayed up that night and watched from your tent or heard from your tent what was happening. And in the morning when the people woke up, they saw the most extraordinary thing, a pathway through the sea. And Moses cries out, go, go. And the people gather up their stuff and their tents and all their belongings. And they begin to move hundreds of thousands of them out across this pathway. It was about two and a half to three miles long, that walk across. It would have probably taken them all three, four hours to all get across. What a day for Israel when the God of Jacob came down and made a path pathway through the sea and behind them with the Egyptians and the Egyptians came in after them and Pharaoh said go we're going to chase after them and then the Bible says that God looked the cloud and the pillar of fire and he sees the Egyptians and then Moses lifts up his rod and the waters of the Red Sea uh, begin to flow back to over those Egyptians and that army that was chasing them. The Bible says that God was magnified in the sight of Israel on that day, that they in astonishment and wonder. They begin to shout, they begin to sing, they begin to dance and to praise and to magnify the living God, the God of Israel. They get out their instruments and the women come with their tambourines tambourines and they begin to dance and to shout their praises to God and they're singing who is like you O Lord among the gods who is like you you are glorious in holiness you are fearful in praises you do wonders who is like you O Lord O God we say to you what they said to you on that day who is like you O Lord among the gods, who is like you? Fearful in praises, glorious in holiness, doing wonders, who is like you? Lord, we say to you today, there is no one like you. Could you be magnified in our eyes like you were in Israel's eyes on that day? Amen.